Hello, Diana. Looking beautiful, Anna. Hi. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Charles. Hello, Charles. Hello, how are you? We're fine. And you, where are you from? Uh, the United States and Texas. Wow, great. Glad What's to be here. What's the weather here. like in Texas now? Uh, it's cloudy at about 58 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay. How did you survive the winter? Oh. You had. <laughs> Not a problem, not a problem at all. We were on a electrical grid with a fire station very close by. So we mm -hmm. never lost electricity or internet or anything. So mm -hmm. we were very Lucky blessed. You. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people didn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello, Nika. Where are you from? Hi, everyone. Uh, from California. Oh. <laughs> hey, Nico. <laughs> yeah, I made it to Moscow. I, I wanted to come to uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow last year, but because of COVID, not able to <laughs> physically visit. <laughs> Nico's one of my friends. Hi, Nico. <laughs> okay. Let's see, who else is here? Diana. Ah. Can I ask you for a favor? Sure. I have to check some uh, moments. And yeah. can, you, uh, can you welcome our guests? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> if anyone wants to introduce themselves. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Diana. And I see a lot of new faces. In fact, I haven't been to this club for probably a year because <laughs> I left the country and then I never joined online. Um, so uh, you're all new to me, absolutely. So whom do we have here? M Maureen, hi Maureen. Hello. Where are you joining us from Maureen? I'm from Aruba, from the Caribbean. Oh my gosh, yes. you've come from a far way. Yes, my first time visiting you all in Russia, right? Nice, nice. So what time is it there? It must be a totally different time zone now. Correct, it's 12 a.m. 12 a.m. Yes. This... Okay. Yes, and you, what time it is? Well, I'm currently in London, but I'm oh. from Russia myself. So in London, it's now half past five, okay. but in Russia, it's half past seven, roughly. And so. we are in one world, different time zone, but it's nice to be here. Exactly. I mean, the time zones don't matter anymore. Well, nice I've, to see you. Yes. Thanks to David, we are here. Hi, David. Hey. <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hey, David. <laughs> yeah, that's how the welcome should be. Hi, David. Where are you joining us from? In New York. Oh, sweet. Nice. Um, who else do we have? Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Ah. Good morning from Austin, Texas. Hey, Stanley. Good to see you. Good to see be here. So do some of you know each other already then? Oh, yes. <laughs> a, a few of us might be rather well acquainted. <laughs> right. How come? You're all from different states, though, aren't you? Yes, yeah. but we're all connected by Toastmasters. And there's my friend from the Philippines, Phoebe. <laughs> ah, wow. So is it that you, you agree to travel together to different clubs, or is it just a coincidence now? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, uh, we share our journeys. And uh, in particular, recently, we've been enjoying following Richard Peck on his tour around the world. Oh. And, and David's, David's our ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> he's, head of, he's head of the Peck Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, Pied the, 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 the Motley crew. <laughs> yeah, the Motley crew. Yeah, the Motley crew. There we go. <laughs> well, am I not lucky today to really get to know the really important people here in the Mafia? So maybe if I need something from Richard Peck, I could always ask you. 
and, and right, greetings, uh, greetings from Lark Dorley, Bassett National President. Oh, yay! She's a friend of mine, and mm -hmm. she's this is her last day at work. She's re retiring effective Lark today, is? and so she's got quite the day ahead of her oh. for today. But but she does. I do extend greetings on her behalf. The oh. Golden Lady. Yep. Yeah. Oh, the lady of Toastmasters. Well, hello. Uh, hi, Betsy. Hello. It's nice to see you. And yes, I'm one of David's followers. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. So you're one of the gang. Got it? Yeah, yeah, Diana, you, you can't beat us, so you might as well join us. That's right. <laughs> Well, um, uh, it depends how much you pressure <laughs> me today, being the head of the mafia. <laughs> um, we're gonna all, we're gonna give you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> right. <laughs> so where are you joining us from, Betty? Excuse me, from from Georgia, the state of Georgia in the USA, in the southern part of the United States. Oh, sweet. No relation to Georgia, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> right wow that's amazing so many people from the yes welcome guys welcome uh phoebe hi phoebe hi hello i'm from philippines hey. <laughs> friend i love friend chuck david hello nice are you also a member of their gang then Oh, yeah, I have joined recently. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I feel excluded now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hi, Larissa. How are you? Oh, no microphone. Oh, no? Hi. I, I mean, I don't know how to wave uh, with this uh, <laughs> background. Uh, so it appears. <laughs> oh, I, at least I see a face yeah. I recognize. Larissa is a, is a big person at Toastmasters community in Russia. She has helped to establish the first area that we have, uh, that, well, when, when was that Larissa? That was some time ago now, so, right? uh, 2014. Nice, 2014, wow. Well, she did a lot of job for that, a lot of work for that. And also she was one of the first people who started to organize international conferences in Russia. So like uh, yeah. a lot of uh, thank you from yeah. the Dismasses community. Together with Valeria, who will be later um, also in the program. Yeah. Not alone, <laughs> I mean. Oh, of course we do all <laughs> things together all the time, basically. Oh, she's a big name in our Dismasses community, so get to know her. Now, who else do we have? Joel. Joel, am I pronouncing your name right? Joel. I'm Joel and oh, Joel, I'm coming. I'm, sorry. I'm coming in from Bangkok, Thailand. Oh, nice. Nice. Hi, Joel. Do you have many clubs in Bangkok there? Um, not so many clubs. Uh, I belong to a club um, in California. Nice. And now you're just connecting from there. You join your club, you join other clubs as well. Right. <laughs> nice. Well, nice to see you, Joel. Uh, Holly. Hello. Hi, Holly. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be here on this uh, important meeting. And welcome from Indian, Indiana, uh, where the Indianapolis 500, the race car um, event is. And it's in the USA, Midwest, kind of in the Hi, middle, Marjorie. upper middle. Hi, Marjorie. Marjorie How is are also you? from Indiana. Yeah. Good to see everyone. This is awesome to be here today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Nice, nice. So many people. How about, what do you think of this idea? How about we rename ourselves so we know where we're coming from? Because I'm, I don't think I'll have the time to ask every single person. If we have our first and last name, then comma, and then what do we do? Let's go country and then and then state or city, because there is a chance we might not see it. So how about that? Or, or other way around, but basically your, your full name followed by your country. And I'm gonna do that as well from my side. 
And what shall I put, Russia or, or London? <laughs> I'll put where I'm joining from, so UK. Diana Robertson, do you see my name? Uh, or Holly, do you see it? I can see, uh, I, I can only see Mar Marjorie and you have a, a, a complicated a uh, surname. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry. No, no, don't be. Uh, and where are you joining us from? Because I can't see it. It's you cannot see Indiana, uh, US, Indianapolis, Indiana. Ah, uh, no, I can't. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to see all the way. It's too long. Okay. Yeah. Nah, it's okay. Oh well. All right. Hello, Elisa from Singapore. Hello. Good evening everyone good evening well good morning to many people here and afternoon <laughs> but yeah I'm not sure what time is that here but it's already midnight in singapore and i'm ha very happy oh to be wow there. oh my gosh wow uh how are you today yeah it's great amazing uh i'm very happy to be in moscow this is my i think the third time i'll be in moscow but looking forward to listen to all the good speakers from here, from Toastmasters. Oh, nice. So well, welcome, welcome. Thank you for oh, having me. Yeah. Nice to see you. Oh, and I see we have uh, probably the most important guest has joined us because of whom all this gang has come and gathered together. Please big, give a big round of applause to Richard Peck. Hello, Diana. How are you today? I am great. Thank you. How are you today? I'm well. Actually, everybody in the window are the important guests. Uh, well, and I like the way you've been conducting the session so far, getting everybody involved. Very well done. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we, we got to know each other here since we have time. Um, how are you doing? It's my first time ever meeting you. It's, it's such a pleasure. I have no idea what to say. I lost all my words. What would you say if a member showed up at your club without a title attached to their name, Diana? I would say, welcome to the club. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome, Richard, to our club. Well, thank you, Diana. And please, the, the titles go away. We're all just members. So that's the way I like to be treated. And when I got my evaluation today, I hope my evaluator will treat me the same way as as they would treat any other speaker. Oh, Absolutely. Wow. Thank you, Christina. Are you, Christina, are you my evaluator today? Exactly. Nice to meet you. And it's I, really a great honor for me to be a personal evaluator today. Well, thank you. I cry easily, so please don't hurt me too, too badly. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I will try my best. <laughs> OK. Oh. Yeah, guys, it's all almost 7.30. And Diana, thank you for your welcoming session. That was great. I would like to ask Irina Suvorova. Uh, is everyone here? Other role takers? Are you actually? Hello, Irina. Alan, are you here? I think no. We have our timer, our A counter, our two speakers, but we are still seventh grammarian. So, would you like to send him a message, Anna? Okay. Yes, I will send him a message, but I think we can start. Dear guests, I'm Anna, president of. Toastbusters Club Moscow Russia and I'm excited to see you here today at our regular meeting regular but not <laughs> uh, regular but special because today we are having an important guest international president of Toastmasters Richard Peck and let me if there are any newcomers let me say a couple of words about Toastmasters it's an international organization that provides a cool educational system on public speaking, leadership and communication. And what is what I like most about Toastmasters that it creates such a great 
supportive and friendly atmosphere that almost everybody, no matter how shy or how unconfident a person is, can develop confidence, build confidence, learn public speaking and find some mm, qualities in themselves that they um, never thought they had before. So it develops, Toastmasters develop people. Our meeting will have three parts. In the first part, we will hear, we will listen to two unfortunately prepared speeches because one of the members had some family issues and cannot come. We're going to listen to two speeches. Then in the middle, we will have a table topic session and everyone can participate, though there are so many people, probably <laughs> not everyone will have the chance. And at the end, we'll have an evaluation session where we'll listen to reports of personal evaluators and our experts. And before I will share, I will pass my pass this stage to uh, the Toastmaster of the day, I would like to take a picture. And uh, before taking a picture, I should ask for your consent for the picture to be shared on social Toastmaster show, social media. So I will share a notice in the chat and also just notice you that uh, if you if you leave your camera on, that means that you give your consent to for these pictures to be shared online. And we also have a recording of the meeting. So if you ha don't have to, to appear um, on pictures or on video, just let me know in a private chat. Okay. Uh, just a moment, just a moment, I will share the notice for you to read it. Okay, just a moment. <clears throat> and I'm waiting for your smiles to make the pic to take the picture. Are you ready? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Just a moment, second page. We've got so many guests. One more time. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I also um, tell you some rules. So stay muted unless you are called on stage. And we also use this sign to make a virtual applause to the speakers because they can't listen to our actual applause. I think that is all. And with great pleasure, I give the stage to the Toastmaster of the day, a distinct, the distinguished Toastmaster, member of our club, area director, Irina Suvorova. Thank you, Anna. Good evening, good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to see you here. People who doesn't know their history has no future. Mikhail Lomonosov. Toastmasters is about leadership and communication. Although people in the ancient time, several centuries ago, didn't use this word so much. But we had actually many strong leaders since the ancient times in our history, I mean Russian history as well as world history. Today, I propose to recall some of these leaders. And here we go with the sharing my screen. Did you see my screen? Yes, Anna? Mm -hmm. We had what they did, these leaders, which advice could they give us for our leadership way uh, at Toastmasters in Korea, in our personal lives? Today, during our meeting, we will recall, we will recall some of the famous leaders, stars, emperors, or just famous people. And I prepared some quotes which could be useful 
for us as Toastmasters. First of all, how Russian people saved their thoughts in the ancient time. Today, we have notes, notebooks, laptops, video, audio, everything for saving our memories. But ancient people wrote chronicles. And Vladimir Manamach, as you see on the screen, was one of the first Russian duke who asked to write chronicles in monasteries, churches, etc. Actually, it was the tale of the past years, Povest Vremenich Lied. Vladimir II Vonomach reigned as Grand Prince of the Kivian Rus in 12th century. It was the time for reinforcement of the Kiev Rus, and Vladimir was able to unite up to 75% of the ancient Russian territories and stop the Duke's fights. And he said, respect the guests, no matter where did he came from, whether is he a peasant, noble, or an ambassador. Sounds familiar for Toastmasters, isn't it? We are happy to see every guest from any Toastmasters club all over the world. We respect every one of you, especially now online, when it should be much easier. And every guest here today is unique, as Richard Peck said already. And firstly, I would like to start our conversation with our role takers presenting. And to continue my topic, you see Vladimir Lenin here. Why? The old Julian calendar used in Russia in the beginning of the 12th century. The difference between Gregorian and Julian calendars was 13 days created inconvenience in our relationship, Russia and Europe. So the decree about introduction, the Western European calendar has been accepted in the 1918 by Vladimir Lenin in order to establish the same time management. And Vladimir Ilyich Lenin Ulyanov was the Russian revolutionary, politician, and political theorist. He served as the first and founding head of government of Soviet Russia and the Soviet Union after that. And under his administration, Russia and later the Soviet Union became a one-party socialist, socialist state government. And there is in almost every Russian city, small or large, no matter, his monument in the central square, actually till the present moment. And he said, not to be afraid of our own mistakes admitting multiple and repeating work on correcting them, and we will be on the top. And again, I assume it sounds quite familiar for you, for Toastmasters. We are developing ourselves constantly. And of course, we should respect the time not only our calendar, but also our minutes and hours. And our first role taker today is Timer. He will continue the topic about the time with his role explanation. And I invite to the stage, Denis Deventiev. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. Good evening, fellow members and dear guests. This evening, I have a honor to be a Timer. As you might know, one of the main skills uh, that we practice here in Toastmaster Club is expressing through within specific time. At the timer, I'm responsible for monitoring time for meeting segments and speakers. We have a special procedure uh, which helps us to be in time limits. So while you are on stage today, as a timer, I will give you a special signals. For instance, uh, you will see green light behind my back, such kind of light. Uh, so you will see a green light behind my back when the speaker has reached his minimum time limit. And you will see yellow light behind my back when the speaker is 30, 30 seconds from his time. And I will show you a red light like this. A red light. Uh, a red light behind my back when the speaker has exceeded his or her time. 
and holds and I will hold this red time till the speaker left the stage. Thank you. Uh, so at the end of the mini and, and at, the, at the end of the, this meeting, I will announce the speakers that who did not fit in the time limits during evaluation session. I hope you will be comfortable with time limits today, and I will. I wish good luck for you. Thank you very much, Denise. Thank you for your role presenting, and we will continue to explore our history. Do you know how strange some words in Russian language were before the revolution? Of course, you cannot remember it, doesn't it? So let's see. There were so much unusual letters in our language actually before 1918, where, uh, when the decree about Russian orthography reform was signed by Anatoly Lunacharsky, and some letters been eliminated from the alphabet. You can see on the screen Yati, Fita, and E was eliminated, and instead of them will be used E, F, E. Also, hard sign was gone totally uh, from the end of our words. By the way, Lunacharsky was the first Bolshevik Soviet people commissar responsible for the Ministry of Education as well as an active playwright, critic, essayist, and journalist throughout his career. He made an enormous contribution in the culture development, in the Soviet educational system, in the publishing, in the art of theater and cinema. He presented himself as theoretic of the art, created much of the articles on this topic, and was the first who declared the ideal of life as human existing, free, harmony, open for creation, and pleasant. And his quote for tonight is, every one of us who assumed that he could lead others has to learn continuously and hardly. I assume that again, it sounds familiar for you. And we will continue the topic of unnecessary sounds and words together with our A counter today, Anna Soltis. Welcome to the stage. Dear guests and Toastmasters, today I am going to be your accountant. And I would like to ask you, what makes a perfect speaker? What make, a, um, what make us to listen to him? Uh, with bated breath, good, clean speech. It is often help, uh, happens that uh, we use different uh, words and sounds like uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, just to feel pauses and to allow ourselves to think what comes next in our speech. But this doesn't make our speech better. That's why today I'm going to listen to you carefully and to count that sounds like a uh, 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 which you will use, unnecessary sounds. And at the end of this meeting, I will provide a short report, which I hope very much will help you to improve your performances and to become a better speaker. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. Thank you, Anna, for your introduction. Your role is very, very useful for us, as well all the roles, of course. We will continue our way with the Russian leaders. And I think you are quite familiar with this leader, isn't it? Peter the Great, first Russian emperor. In 1710, Peter the Great simplified book printing, as you can see here. And one of the most important innovations became 
Tivil font, which made reading and writing much easier. This was his way of the reading and writing popularization in Russia. And for new font invention, Peter the Great ordered to open Russian typography. Where do you think? In Amsterdam. Also, he was interested in creating of the historical archive or library for all historical knowledge systematization. So all manuscripts and books has been taken from monasteries, copied and returned back after 10 years. Except of that, of course, there were much more innovations, achievements, reform during his reign. St. Petersburg founding, opening the window to Europe, etc., etc. And he said, it is my great desire to reform my subjects, and yet I am ashamed to confess that I am unable to reform myself. We are here to reform ourselves constantly. Maybe Peter the Great said that because there were no any Toastmasters clubs during this period. Who knows? And we are able to do this every day, every night. And speaking about grammar, our grammarian today, Alan Akamba, will help us with self-reforming. Alan, stage is yours. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. It's important to pay attention to your grammar as you are delivering your presentation or your speech, because if you don't, it might come across as unprofessional. That's why tonight I will be looking and listening for mistakes, but also I will focus on good uses of grammar in general. And um, I also have a word that we can use tonight as I am also the word master. The word tonight, because we are talking about historical figures in Russia, the word, the adjective is historical. Historical means it has to do with the past. It's connected to the past. So you can say, for example, Peter the second, Peter the first is a historical figure. Or if you come from France, you can say Napoleon is a historical figure. Or if you come from the United States, you might say Abraham Lincoln it's a historical figure in the United States. But you can also use the adjective historic. It's not exactly the same thing. Historic means important in history. For example, I can say this is the historic meeting for Toastbusters. If you use the adverb historically, I will also count it as you. So historical, historic, and historically. So having said that, I head back the mic to you, Madam Postmasters. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for this word, historical. I will try to do my best with using it and encourage everyone to do the same. And we are going further. The most attentive Russian imperial was considered to be, what do you think? Who do you think? It was a little surprise for me, Alexander III. He was emperor of Russia at the end of the 18th century. He was highly reactionary and reversed some of the liberal, liberal reforms of his father, Alexander II. He opposed any reform that limited the autocratic rule. And during his reign, Russia fought no major wars. He was therefore styled the peacemaker. And here is just funny story about his attentiveness. A Russian squadron was stationed at the round roadstead of Kronstadt, and Emperor Alexander III, with his wife Maria Fyodorovna, a Danish princess, Maria Dagmar, watched the beautiful formation of ships. Next to the cruiser Rurik with the military steamer Izora, Maria Fyodorovna, looking through the lorgnette, read the name of the cruiser, and at the same time, she made a mistake quite forgivable to a foreigner. He confused the Russian letter P with the Latin P. 
uh, Russian letter R with the latent P, and I confused also. And in her broken language, he sounded loudly, Pupik, not Rurik, but Pupik. And Alexander III glanced at the ship Izora, standing next to the Rurik, and hurried to warn his wife. Please do not read aloud the following name. Some of you can understand this joke and I will repeat maybe in the chat <laughs> the name of this ship for our international guests. So you can see from this story how fast reacting this emperor was. And now I'm invited to the stage, our role taker, which needs fast reaction too. It is quiz master Daniel Filonov. Hi everyone. I used to see the, this Alexander the Third guy in my city. Now I learned his profession. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Historical day for me. His famous phrase used to be, the Russian, the Russia has only two friends, the army and the fleet. For my part of the meeting, you will need only two friends, your left ear and your right ear. Because I will ask you a questions about what you heard today, and you not allowed to leave until you will tell me all contributions made by Anatoly Lunacharsky, or, for example, the profession of Alexander the Third. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. We will wait with a great attentive for your quiz uh, at the end of our meeting. And now we are going to our prepared speeches today. And to start my introduction, I would like to start with the first speech, I assume. Yes, Anna? Our first speaker is here because uh, I have slide for him. Uh, uh, Cole, are you ready to be the first? Let's uh, let's make Diana the first, okay? Uh, I will do my best. We're well, sorry, we have some changes to the agenda that I haven't shared in the chat. Sorry, I will do this now. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I can go first. Anna, if, if it's easier, I can go first. No problem. Ah, you oh. can. Okay. Yeah. So let us stick to the program. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I will start my introduction part with the, another, with other leader. And let me show my screen to you. Ivan the Terrible or Ivan Force, Ivan Grozny. The most contradictional figure in the among Russian leaders, I assume. The early part of Ivan's reign was one of the peaceful reforms and modernization. He revised the law code, creating the Sudebnik, founded a standing army, Strelci, established the Zemsky Sabor, first Russian parliament, by the way, and the Council of the Nobles, known as the Chosen Council, and confirmed the position of the church with the Council of the Hundred Chapters, which united the rituals and regular regulations of the whole country. He introduced local self-government to rural regions, mainly in northeastern Russia, populated by the state peasantry. Ivan ordered in 1553 the establishment of the Moscow Print Yard, and the first printing press was introduced to Russia already at the uh, 16th century. And his quote for you, how can I, a tree bloom of if its roots are dry? So it is here until there is a proper order in the kingdom, where will, where will military courage come from? If the leader doesn't constantly strengthen the army, when he will rather be defeated than a winner. And you, despising all this, praise only courage, and what courage is based on, it's not important to you. 
So he respected proper order, strong system as essential parts for any project implementation. And we see Ivan IV knew how to control and how to manage uh, many of the projects with all these reforms. As our first speaker, who knows more about, who knows much um, about team collaboration, and I invite to the stage with the speech named Cheers, Colin Dillon. Let me just organize my camera a little bit. Can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> very good, excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, Irina. Good evening to everybody, all Toastmasters and guests. So, I have an Irish saying for you. May your glass be always full. May the roof over your head be always strong. And may you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you a small but magical tour of three famous Irish alcoholic drinks, Guinness, Bailey's and Bulmer's Cider. I'd be very surprised if you hadn't, haven't heard of all of the aforementioned. So I will be explaining to you a little bit of history about each of them, how they are made, some ingredients, and also some facts about each. So number one, my favorite, Guinness. Guinness is probably Ireland's most famous export. They call it the pint of black, mainly because of its distinct taste, because of its dark color. Some say it's black, but it's actually more of a dark ruby red, and also because of its creamy head. It was gifted to the world by Arthur Guinness, who later became Sir Arthur Guinness all those years ago, a long, long time ago in 1759. It became so popular that it's now produced in over 50 countries and is sold in approximately 120. Guinness is made from water, barley's, roast malt extract, hops, and also yeast. At 232 degrees Celsius, the barley becomes a magic black liquid. Any lower than this temperature and the taste will be completely different. Any higher, the barley will go on fire. If you're ever in Dublin, make sure you visit St. James's Gate Brewery, which is a wonderland, a seven story wonderland where you will learn all about the history of Guinness. But make sure you get to the seventh floor which is a 360 degree panoramic bar with a magnificent view over Dublin. And I'm sure you'll probably even get the best Guinness there you've ever had in your life. Have at least one. Second drink, Baileys. Every Irish household has at least one bottle of, ba bottle of Baileys stashed away in their cupboards. Baileys is a world recognized drink and it's so popular that 2,300 glasses are consumed every single minute. It was brought to the market in 1973 by Tom Jago and his colleagues who originally made it in their kitchen mixer. Bailey's is made from Irish cream, cocoa and whiskey. Over 200,000 litres of fresh Irish dairy milk produced from 38,000 dairy cows, the poor cows, go into the process of producing the dairy cream on an annual 
basis. Then a propri proprietary cocoa extract recipe is added, as well as vanilla, herbs, and sugar. Number three, Bulmer's Irish Cider, or as it's traded internationally outside of Ireland, Magner's Cider. Bulmer's is a very famous cider, which competes with beer, and it is, it was, the company was formed in Tipperary, County Tipperary on the west of Ireland, in a town cl called Clonmel, by the founder, an Irish chap named William Magners. It's best served with ice. The ingredients mainly involve 17 different varieties of apples, and as I said, it's mainly drank in the summer months as, a, as, as an alternative to normal beers. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've given you a brief overview of three very famous Irish alcoholic beverages. I would recommend you all have a, at least try one of them if you haven't done already. You certainly could go a lot, or do a lot worse, but be very careful my dear friends, and take heed of the famous words of the Irish poet and playwright Oscar Wilde, who said, work is the enemy of the drinking classes. Cheers to you all, and, and international president. Have a good evening. Wow. Thank you, Cole. So we we are moving forward faster, and I would like to introduce you to Power Woman, Catherine the Great. She tried to propagate among Russian nobility the philosophy of European Enlightenment, which she was well familiar with, and her age is called the Epoch of the Enlightenment Absolutism. We are much of the reforms, educational healthy, etc. And of course, the quote, the quote, again, maybe will sound familiar for you. I like to praise and reward in a loud voice and to scold him a whisper. Is it not about right and tactful feedback? What do you think? And our second speaker is also a power woman who made a lot for Russian Toastmasters for UK Toastmasters, energetic and inspirational leader, Diana Robertson. And let's learn together with Diana, the very interesting topic, why you should grow bezel. Thank you, Irina. Did you know that basil can make you happy? When you eat basil, your body releases happiness hormones, big things from tiny seeds. You and I are not very different from this basil seed. Now, of course, we don't need to be planted, watered, or covered in fertilizers, thank God. But just like this seed with enough support, we can bring so much happiness to this world. But life does not always provide the support you need. And without support, it's very hard for anything to grow. Dear little Basils, when I was a child, I came to my dad and said, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. I want to become an entrepreneur. I will never forget my dad's reaction. Who do you think you are? You don't have what it takes to, be, to manage a business. But dad, know your place, girl. It felt like a cold wave just slapped me, dragging me down. I wanted to reply, but the sand was stuck in my throat. I was crushed. When I was at school, I remember a boy next to me asking me to help him with an exercise the teacher was on. Suddenly, I hear the teacher scream, Diana, 
If you are so smart, why don't you just teach the entire class? Because I'm not paid for it, I thought. But my face started to go in a, into a tomato mode. Know your place, girl. It felt like a cold wave just slapped me, dragging me down. I wanted to reply, but the sound was stuck in my throat. I was ground down. Later, I went to college, graduated, and landed an incredible job. I was about to become a business development manager. Not sure what it means? Me neither. For me, it really mattered to make my work, my company, a better place. So I started to dig in into the core business problems until it hit me. I have found a solution to half of them. Excited, I came to my manager and had in him my proposal. He looked at it. Who do you think you are? You've been at this job for what, five minutes? And you already think that you're smarter than everyone here? Not everyone, just you, crossed my mind. But my hands started to shake. My voice started to tremble. No, no, not at all. I've been here for five months. I've been researching this. I've, I've taken dozens of employees of, 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 of interviews and, and I have all the stats and I, I know your place, girl. It felt like a cold wave just slapped me, dragging me down. I wanted to reply, but the sand was stuck in my throat. I was pesto. Have you ever been crushed, ground down, pestoed? You and I are shaped by our life experiences. Every time we get pestoed, we lose faith in ourselves and we accept the place others see us in. One day, I found myself at a strange event. It was full of people preaching about the value of communication and leadership. First, I thought it was a cult, but because I have never seen so many sweet, supportive people gathered in one place, I wanted to join them and I became a Toastmaster. After one of the meetings, a tired, stressed, weary looking man, our president back then, approached me. Diana, you have what it takes to become the next club president. Why would I ever do this to myself? Crossed my mind. But deep inside, I wanted the opportunity to prove myself. Diana, you could be a great president. Know your place, girl. My dad's voice started to echo in my ears. I know you can do it. For some reason, the confidence in this man's voice was louder than the voices in my head. It felt like he knew something I didn't. So I believed him and I became the next club president. And ladies and gentlemen, this experience has changed my life. For the first time, when I brought my ideas to the table, nobody told me to know my place. In just one year, my committee and I have taken the club from being one of the worst performing clubs to being the best performing club in the country. This experience has show to me that the only person who can decide where my place is, is myself. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am an entrepreneur, a teacher, and I develop my own business. Thanks to Toastmasters, 
because it was the Toastmasters family that has given me the support I needed to discover my place. What about you? Do you support people around you? When your child comes to you and says, Dad, I want to become an influencer, whatever that means. Do you believe in him like my president believed in me? Or do you make pesto out of him? The truth is, with just a little of your support, you have the power to bring so much happiness to this world. Just like, oh, this heavy basil down here. <laughs> Dear Madame Toastmaster. Gosh, you gained some weight there. Oh. <gasps> Wonderful, Diana. <laughs> It's great. You definitely inspired me, maybe for the next few years of serving Toastmasters. Thank you very, very much. We have to go faster. And let me introduce you next leader, Yaroslav the Wise, 11th century. If he was the first Duke who began to use dynastic marriages for international unities, he understood well that Rus will reinforce his authority if he become the relative of the European leaders. The youngest daughter of the Duke married Henrik I in France. The middle daughter married the Norway king Harald and the oldest daughter came to Hungary for marrying Andres pretending to the crown. And by the way, it were all love marriages. And the quote of Yaroslav, which I chose today for you, is also about love. If you live in hatred, in strife and quarrels, you yourself will all perish and destroy the land of your fathers and grandfathers, who obtained it by their great labor. So everything should be made with love and harmony. And who knows, maybe all of us, Russian and European Toastmasters, as well as USA Toastmasters, are distant relatives. It's a small word. It's a small fault. And that's the speech title of our third speaker, our honored guest, Toastmasters International President, Richard Peck. Welcome to the stage. Somebody muted me. There we go. How's that? Can you hear me now? Excellent. Thank you. Let me share my screen. You should be able to see my screen now. With the title, It's a Small World. When you hear that saying, what comes to your mind? Is a world of 7.7 .7 billion people, 199 countries, 4,600 known religions, seven continents, really small? Or is it a little bit too large to comprehend? Some of you may be familiar with these words. It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. It's a world of hopes and a world of fears. There's so much that we share that it's time we're aware. It's a small world after all. Who's heard those words before? I know Nico has for sure if he's gone to Disneyland or Disney World because these are the words from the song, It's a Small World that is played every time you go to that ride. Now, when I heard these words, to me, it was kids shrieking. It was the sound of nails on a chalkboard. You know, that grating sound that makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck and just did not want to hear them anymore. And then I started thinking about them around March of 2020 and started to put some perspective on what it is to be a small world. Let me share a couple of dates with you to jog your memory 
over what's happened this past year. On December 31st, 2019, the United States of America experienced its first case of COVID-19. The first known case that we had. Yet we know that there were other places in the world that were already experiencing it. And then March 11th, 2020, I celebrated my 58th birthday. Oh no, that wasn't what was important about March 11th, 2020. March 11th, 2020 was the day that the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic a historic date that tilted the world on its axis. And between March 13, 2020 and January, 2020, January 26th of 2021, Zoom stock went through the roof from just about $100 to about $300 a share. Who would have liked to have known about Zoom before March 11th and got in on that little whirlwind? some truly historic dates in our lives. And it became a time when we could have been truly separated, when we could have been truly isolated. And then we found the keyboard and the way to keep in touch with each other with the stroke of an enter key we were able to reach out to others. We weren't socially distanced. We were physically distanced. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really tired of getting, giving this life in a one by two inch box. And my computer screen really hates it when I give it high fives. But it's the world that we're in right now. But as you look at your participant window, Look at the people who are here, traveling to Moscow from around the world, an opportunity that they would have not had before. So what are our barriers right now? What is it that the pandemic has thrown in front of us that stops us from being able to get together? Well, I thought long and hard about this. And what I realized is the only barrier before us right now is a time zone. If you're willing to get up early or stay up late, you can be anywhere in the world. You already heard Eliza say it was just after midnight in Singapore. Anywhere in the world. And let's think about it. You don't have to find your passport anymore or even worry about whether it's expired. No long security lines as you go to check into the airport. No 16 hour flights anywhere. Oh, and that dreaded jet lag. How many of you have woken up with eyes that look like that after a long flight? Just several days of it, not knowing where you are, what time zone you're in, what you're even doing there. All of this has gone away. It's not about having a lot of money anymore. It's not about getting on that airplane. It's not even about being socially distanced. It's about the physical distance between us and the keyboard to be able to be anywhere we want to be. And that became very important as I started trying to realize how to reach to our members, how to be more connected with you. And that's when the world tour started. And these here are the little pinpoints that I have visited since October of this year. 113 to date with just a few more left to go. Fellow Toastmasters, it is a small world. It is in the palm of your hands. It is at the end of your fingertip to click enter and visit the world around you. It is a small world. Go out and travel it. Madam Toastmaster. 
Thank you. Thank you, Richard, very much for this inspirational speech. We announced the break in our agenda, but I propose to go faster without any break, as we are a little bit late. And we are moving closer to our the most funny part of this uh, meeting, it's improvisational speeches, table topics. And I invite to our virtual stage for introduction of her role and announce, announcement of time limits, Larissa Zorina. Larissa, welcome to the stage for the table topic session. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Irina, for such a nice introduction. Uh, so, and saying that it will be a funny part, I think that it was a very serious part in the beginning about our, the leaders of Russia. Uh, and um, I hope it, it may be funny uh, what we will talk about. But anyway, uh, it, it may be serious, but it will be ent entertaining um, uh, as I expect. So um, the time limits, um, I, I, I will just remind, I think everybody knows about it here, but maybe for some guests it will be interesting to know. So I have to uh, in total, I have 20 minutes and I, uh, every, uh, I will announce the question. Uh, you, uh, you will speak from one to two minutes. So maximum time for every spe speaker is two minutes. Uh, and we'll actually have uh, from uh, six to eight speakers. I can't predict uh, exactly because uh, so it, it will depend on how, how, how long we'll speak. And uh, I'm ready to start. I hope I can share the screen. Yeah, uh -huh, good. Um, as Irina has uh, um, introduced the topic of leadership, of uh, uh, speaking about great leaders of Russia and introducing our history to our, uh, our most welcome guest and reminding of some dates to our to Russian speaking members. So I will continue this topic uh, with the team, uh, the characteristics of a good leader. So I would like all, all of us to uh, speak about the traits of a uh, good leader. So what makes us good leaders? I'm sure Toastmasters know about it, but here uh, in the topic table topic, you will get the um, task from myself. So you will choose one of their numbers and then you will get a certain trait and a question. And you'll have from one to two minutes to speak about it. I have two volunteers, but maybe if someone else would like to participate, please drop me uh, a private message. I am Larissa. If you, you can find me in the, in the uh, endless uh, list of uh, people uh, yeah, for, uh, who are present here. And I will start with the first participant, Florian Bay. Florian, which number would you like to take? Number one, please. Mm, number one. Just a moment. I have some technical problems. Just I will. Okay. Uh huh. So Florian, you, you've got confidence. And the question: Why does a leader need to be confident? The stage is yours. Thank you very much, Larissa. Wow, what a great question. Why does a leader need to be confident? Well, I, I'd like to kind of spell something to everybody already. Leadership is not easy. Leadership is often very hard for a couple of reasons. Number one, unexpected event can happen. It could be a pandemic like it did a year ago. It could be something not turning out the way we would, uh, we would, we would have liked or somebody potentially not necessarily agreeing with the kind of things that we hold quite dear. And this means that if we have this confidence, if we have this inner strength within us, all of this becomes much easier. And another reason why leadership is hard is because quite often we, gotta, we have to work with people that vehemently disagree with us, or even worse, we may not be working with these people, but they might be protesting against us, they might just be um, opposing what we're trying to do, or they might be just against change and might say, it's a crazy idea, it is never going to work. And if our reaction is to just, too much, too much, too much, I don't like disagreement, 
well, we're not going to go quite far because as a leader, we got to be quite forceful sometime. Irina presented to us some very forceful leader like Yekaterina the Great, for example. Well, she had to be quite forceful, forceful in making this decision because sometimes we need to be bold and boldness require a certain sense of confidence. And last but not least, people really are looking up to leaders in situations of crisis. And if they look up to you and they see somebody that's confident, somebody that can radiate calm and cool, uh, cool and confidence, they are more likely to feel confident in turns and to follow you for what you are trying to achieve and for wherever you are looking to lead them to. So confidence is a really important leadership skills. It can be a very difficult one to master. It's not an easy one. And sometimes we may have some setback, especially if we work closely with friends. But as a leader, we need to be bold and boldness requires confidence. Larissa, back to you. Thank you so much, Florian. May I remind all the speakers, maybe you will pin their timer and you will watch their colors so that uh, so we will be in the time limits. So our next speaker is Fetah. Fetah, are you here? Yes, yes, yes. What's your number? Oh. From two to eight. Ah, number seven is my lucky number. Number seven. Very yeah. good. I will first, I'll... I want to do it um, a bit, just a moment. I wanted to, to do it elegantly with the Zoom, but I failed. Don't so worry I, will, I will do it normally. Oops. Okay, so your trade is persistence. Where is the border between stubbornness and persistence? Feta. Ah, yeah, 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 Ay, 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 ay. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say, I have to speak. I know that the uh, president of TMI is here with obviously my due respect. Take that screen off, please, so I actually can see the faces. Uh, but some people called me stubborn, but I call myself persistent. Okay, because I've been for the last two years or one and a half years trying to pursue something and I went everywhere. Okay, and I even sacrificed not going uh, to elect myself into the district as a district leader so that I can say what I want to say. And that is judges anonymity. I've been fighting judges anonymity for a long time. I know it's a rule. I appreciate that and I respect the rule. And it says when applicable, because I always think that uh, transparency builds trust while anonymity uh, promotes distrust. And I know that for a long time, judges, and, uh, judges were always recognized known because there's trust and there's confidence. Few incidents happened sometime, so they took this rule. And I will continue to persevere in order to hopefully Make sure that the trust is built again and reestablished because we all are Toastmasters. As contestants, we go there to compete against ourselves, to improve and to come back. And we have honesty and we have fairness. They don't need to hide us. Of course, we know that in clubs, it's impossible. And started by one day, they're calling, I was a judge in a club of 10 people. And Four judges and say the invisible judges. So some people call it stubbornness because I'm persistent, but I call it persistence. And I hope that one day, in a year, in a two, in three years, judges will be like any other competition in the world, recognized, appreciated, and introduced because we are proud of our judges, we are proud of our Toastmasters, we are proud of our Toastmaster International. And back to you. Thank you so much for such an interesting topic, uh, speaking about judges of Toastmasters. So, and we're going further. Our next speaker is Elisa. Elisa, what's your favorite number? Three, number three. And the trait of a leader with number three is constant learning ability. Uh, so as uh, uh, Lenin said, so we need to learn and, and learn and learn. So it's about the leader. 
if a person is a leader already, why does he or she need more education? What do you think, Elisa? Mm. Thank you very much. This is the question that actually yesterday I asked Richard. And some of the people is been, uh, I've been, I've, uh, I've been meeting with all the people in Toastmaster journey, which is they are old and young, and they have a very long age gap. And everybody say that I'm right. I have the experience. The other one say I have the knowledge. So I've been thinking these people, the youngsters always keep telling that, oh, your time is over. This is the time Toastmaster need to be changed, not a conservative way. And while the, sorry, not so old, the people keep on telling that we have the knowledge, we have the experience, you don't know nothing. So I already can see that many people is fighting over this. So I'm in the middle and in the end, I just look at them and I said, how this can be settled? Because some of the people now, the youngsters especially, don't want to vote for the old people. And the old people say the youngsters are too rude. And this is the question that I really actually want to know, how we handle this. And yesterday, Richard gave me this answer. Maybe for the old one, they need to know how to learn to be a youngster. Then after that, they will understand how to think as a youngster and not treat us like a kids, but treat us as a friend. And maybe for the youngsters, they also need to learn more how to handle and to understand and give a respect to all the people that actually already build up this this, uh, this uh, uh, sorry, organization. So for all the older also, like now, many people is actually stopping doing the Toastmaster because they say, I cannot use Zoom. But I also learned so many, sorry, not so old people, not so young people that they are really learning how to do Zoom. They are learning how to do the internet. And actually everything is possible. It's just that everybody need to learn reach our knowledge and everything can be solved so to be a leader of course we need to learn because this world is keep on changing we never know what will happen next but with the knowledge and learning journey we can handle everything back to you table topic master thank you so much elisa and the next speaker is anton and I'll, he already chosen number two and number two so the very, very important trait is communicative skills. So what the leader needs, and it can be learned. Uh, actually, should a leader be able to find a common language with everybody, or does he sometimes need to confront others? What's your opinion, Anton? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. What a great question. Communication skills. I believe table topics should be a fun session. I believe we should be able to use the word fun. It's in so many different words, like in fundamental. The fundamentals of communication, of course, is being able to speak with each other, to be able to communicate with each other. And I do believe humor is one of the ways we can communicate with each other and bridge that gap. You've heard the joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? And the answer is? to reach the other side. It's one of these bad type of jokes, you know, one of these bad jokes, but it brings a point across. Why do we communicate with each other? So we can understand each other, so we can talk to each other. And I believe in communicating and talking to each other, we can meet common understanding. We can share things, we can share joy, we can share all the good things in life. Richard took us an amazing journey and in his speech today with a small world, and he showed us so many things as he traveled around there. But is that the only reason we communicate? Do we communicate with our words? Can we not communicate with our deeds, our facial expressions? Communication, they say, in a conversation is typically 70% words, 80% body language, 30% something else. But again here, we face in Zoom mainly on communication skills. Zoom is not a very good way of communicating facial expression or gestures because we make them too great, they're off the screen. We make them too small, we don't see them. But make them too slow, uh, below, we don't see them. Communication, a wonderful skill, amazing skill. 
we need to communicate with each other more. On this world tour, we've communicated with so many different other clubs. We've been able to enjoy each other's company. We're enjoying your company here today at Toastbusters. Thank you for inviting us into your house. Thank you for letting us be part of your meeting. Thank you for letting us meet you guys. It is wonderful to see you all, to hear you and speak with you. And how is it? Because we can communicate in a common form. Even if we didn't use English as a medium, we could enjoy your graphics which you show. This is what it's all about, communication. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Anton. And as the next speaker uh, goes, Sebastian with number five. So we are yep. making it faster. And number five is responsibility. How can a leader exercise responsibility at the face of the things he How can't can he influence? At the face of, of the things, things he can't he influence. Can't influence. Yes. Yeah. Right, so let's see. So we could be talking about a Toastmasters club, let's say, where you're going to take a role and you want to do your best inside your committee, yeah? You want to make your club succeed because it's Toastmasters. Of course you do. But then you realise, hang on, there's there's things that I need to know about and things I'm not going to need to do in this role. And I'm and plus, I'm going to be official. I'm going to be have my official... I want to do a VP membership in my club next time saying that. But, you know, I'm going to take official possession. I'm going to have to represent this club, this group. And there may be things that you will not be able to see what's going to happen quite like for example the hybrid thing we're all thinking about doing hybrid meetings possibly as I'm, I'm sure lots of people from clubs here but we don't know what it's going to be like in the new world of Toastmasters let's say when we can go back into a room and when you know but we have to take a responsibility as a club as a committee and in the club as well we will talk about in my club in general what people want to do when we can get back to room so we take a responsibility and we don't, and we will influence, and we will do a bit, and get our view out there. But we have to decide what we're going to do, and that would apply, I believe, to other things as well, business and all, all this, whatever you're doing. And so, I think responsibility is important in an official position, and I think being able to influence group is probably one of the things you want to do as a leader, get your message across there. But of course, there can be people that agree and disagree with you, and then it will be well, that's all part of the fun, isn't it? Back to you, table topics, Miss uh, Master or Mistress. Thank you, thank you very much, Sebastian. Our next speaker is Betty, who is number four. Now it goes with number four. So you have the following correct characteristics ambitiousness. Does ambitiousness hinder? flexibility in our world full of changes. Betty. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and fellow guests. Historically, being ambitious has been seen as a way to succeed. And leaders are seen as ambitious people who want to get to the top and lead other people. That's all well and good, but flexibility is so important as well. I think that sometimes people who are ambitious to a fault are so focused on their own path, what they want to do, where they want to go, that they forget to be flexible and to listen to others as well. And I think that is a much more important aspect of leadership than simply being ambitious. Now that's not to say that you need one instead of the other. All of the qualities and traits that have been given so far have been very important. I think of confidence. One time I won a table topics contest when I gave an answer that was entirely wrong. We were given a quote and we were supposed to talk about it. And I did, I was the last speaker. A friend of mine who was there told me later what everyone else said. And I realized I had totally misunderstood the quote, but I guess I misunderstood it with confidence because I won the contest. That's just one example. All of these traits are so important. And if I had to pick one between flexibility and ambition, I think I'd go with flexibility. Madam Table Topics Master. 
Thank you so much, Betty. And I also uh, appreciate flexibility, but sometimes we have to be very tough at Toastmasters. And this, this issue is time. And our ta uh, table topic discussion now is over. Thank you so much for viewing, um, for sharing the views on the traits of a leader. So we, we, uh, we're here with Florian with uh, uh, topic confidence. Feta spoke about persistence. Elisa uh, told us about constant ability to learn. Anton talked about communication. Sebastian about responsibility. And finally, Betty about ambitiousness. Thank you so much. And I'm gi uh, giving the floor back to the uh, Toastmaster. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you for this wonderful table topic session. So dear ladies and gentlemen, I assume you were happy during this table topic session. A man is happy so long as he chooses to be happy and nothing can stop him. What do you think? Who said this? Well, now I will show you the answer. Alexander Solzhenitsyn who was the famous Russian novelist, philosopher, short story writer, and a political prisoner. He's known globally by his novel called The Gulag Archipelago. It was a highly influential masterpiece that amounted to a head-on challenge to the Soviet state and sold tens of millions of copies around the world. In 1970, Solzhenitsyn was awarded by the Nobel Prize in Literature for the ethical force with which he was pursed the indispensable traditions of Russian literature. In his novels, he shows lives as it was. He was one of the greatest critical thinkers of the Soviet Union, and he was never afraid to tell the truth, no matter how sad or bitter it was. He was heavily criticized by the Soviet government, and many of his novels were censored. Like he asked, living in the new world, where we can say things what matters to us out loud. Lucky us not to be criticized and censored, but evaluated and given advice. In Toastmasters, we welcome constructive and positive feedback and we value when we are given a chance to improve our performance and become better speakers and leaders. Evaluation session, Valeria Holodkova, Russian Area A Director. Welcome to the stage. Hi everyone, I'm so glad and I'm so happy to see everyone here on this virtual stage, including Mr. International President Richard Peck. Fellow Toastmasters, to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. This is not what we're doing at Toastmasters. We're saying things, we're doing things, and we're becoming great speakers and great leaders. And of course, evaluation and criticism is one of the best parts of our performances. Because unless we know what to improve, we just don't improve. That's what I learned in my 13 years in Toastmasters. And I'm so happy to see so many of you right now at Moscow time almost 9 uh, p.m., 9 in the evening, like, I don't know, five continents representing the whole world on this virtual stage, thanks to Zoom and the virtual online session that we're having. As a, to as an, a general evaluator of this session, it is my privilege to evaluate each and every one of us. I'm probably not going to do this, but also the whole flow of today's meeting, tonight's meeting. And I would like to comment upon almost everything that I witnessed tonight. Thank you so much, Madam President of uh, Toastbusters Moscow Club for introducing the guests and uh, the special guest of today's meeting and everyone to this wonderful meeting. Thank you so much to our wonderful Toastmaster DTM. Oh, by the way, we have a wonderful concentration of DTMs tonight. I have never seen so many DTMs. I think probably I witnessed seven or eight DTMs on one stage. This is amazing opportunity. Usually I see it at the conferences. But this is a wonderful, wonderful night and I'm grateful to this. Thank you so much, Madam DTM Irina, 
for introducing this historical topic, which is quite relevant and uh, very interesting. So I actually learned, I'm now listening to an online course on history of Russia, and I've learned a lot during your presentation. Thank you so much for highlighting the most important dates and the most important figures in the Russian history where we actually can learn more about lots of aspects of our cultural, political life. So thank you so much for this topic. And thanks for our wonderful uh, grammarian for introducing the word of the day, historical. Hopefully I used this for several times already and you will count this and we'll report on that later on today. Now, I would also like to introduce our personal evaluators since we all know that critics, oh, by the way, what I wanted to say, thanks for reference to Solzhenitsyn. When I learned literature at my university, before I started learning literature, I thought criticism is bad. Criticism is always bad. People criticize people for doing something bad. But when I started learning literature and reading literature, I found out that criticism is a good word and criticism can be positive or negative. And in Toastmasters, we love having constructive, motivating, positive criticism. And that's why we have personal evaluators for every prepared speech we had tonight. And right now, I would like to introduce our personal evaluators and personal evaluator for the first speech presented by Kong Willen would be another DTM from the UK. And I'm happy to welcome to this virtual stage our guest, personal evaluator, Florian Bay. Welcome. Thank you very much, Valeria. Very good evening, Toastbusters and guests. Tonight, we were treated by an informative speech from Cohn on three different Irish drinks. With a lovely Irish brogue, Cohn took us through the manufacturing process and the description of three drinks, Guinness, Bailey's, and a cider whose name I've forgotten. But I'm going to bring back to, go back to this point later. Com did something very effective right from the start. He engaged us using some props. Props is something that we don't see often used in Toastmasters, especially kind of risky one like food on drinks, but brilliant. I really love the way he was using them. Even he took a, a sip of the drink at the start, took a sip of the drink at the end. So it was a nice loop in, really well done and a lovely way of closing the circle. And throughout, we had a very simple structure that was easy to follow, and we were told in advance what the speech would be about. We learned a lot. We learned about the temperature above which the barley mustn't be roasted for Guinness, otherwise it's all bad. We learned about this bar on the seventh floor. You could take a drink and see the wall of Dublin. And we, we learned also about the quantities of milk used for Baileys, the 17 different varieties of apple used in the cider. A lot of information, a brilliant informative speech. But can a good speech become better still? Yes, it can. And I've got a number of suggestions for improvements from Cole in that respect. Number one, the delivery. I noticed that Cole stood at the back of the room and did this quite a lot. In fact, throughout the entirety of the speech. This is something to avoid, especially when a speech is delivered in person, because it can convey nervousness and also it restricts oneself because the ants cannot be used in anything. Nothing's going to happen in an audience. Nobody's going to attack, uh, is going to attack you down there. So let's free the ants and use some gesture to complement what was being said. For example, about the temperature, could have been using things for the variety of apples, could have counted potentially the varieties of apple on his hand. There's a lot of things that could have been possible at the ants become free. Vocal de delivery. Mellifluous, nice Irish brogue, but I would have loved to see it being a little bit slower and with more poses and conversely, more accentuation. The temperature mustn't be too high because this way it accentuates the key points and subliminally it helps us notice and remember what, what is important in the speech. 
My biggest suggestion for improvement, however, is regards to the content of the speech itself. I would seem to come less is more. We covered three drinks, and maybe that was a little bit too ambitious. Why not focusing on one drink in a lot of detail? Guinness, for example, which kind of took the main, was the main star of the show anyway. Maybe have some slides, have some visuals, some visual language as well, to really have a nice description of how Guinness is made, what it tastes like, and what we should consider tasting it. Less can be more. But all in all, a really good informative speech, learned a lot. But with a few tweaks, we could have a really nice mini, almost like a mini TED talk on Irish drinks. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Florian. Thank you for such a concise, structured evaluation. And, uh, you know, the most critical aspect of feedback is how you interpret it. So hopefully, uh, Calm will interpret it the right way. Uh, it was really well done with its technical techni te technique of the sandwich thing, where you first commented on the positive things, then a little bit of area of improvement, and then summarize it in a way that is positive and totally motivating and constructing. constructive. Thank you so much, Florian, for such uh, a great evaluation and example for the personal evaluators. By the way, fellow Toastmasters, we are now currently holding an evaluation contest, so be aware where to learn from. Now, we're coming to the second personal evaluator, to the speech, and I think it was a sort of a contest speech delivered by our wonderful Diana Robertson, uh, the former member of uh, World Surface Club in Russia, now the member of a UK club, some UK club, I don't know the name, forgive me for that. And now happy to introduce to this stage the last year winner of uh, Evaluation Area Contest in English, our fellow Toastmaster, Jana Litinova. The stage is yours. Dear Toastmasters, fellow members, dear Diana, if I asked the audience about the feelings that filled their hearts, their soul throughout your speech, I'm sure they would answer the same way I felt throughout your speech. I had the same feeling, the same examples in my past life that you mentioned in your speech. So I was really touched by the way you performed on the stage and by the topic you chose for the speech. Pesto, that's the word I would like to use for my evaluation. P goes for persuasive. Did you believe that Toastmasters was an extremely good environment for everyone to develop themselves, to develop their skills, and to feel friendliness of the audience. Did you believe in this after Diana's speech? I did. Emotional. Did you enjoy her smile on the face, her sincere emotions, her true examples from her past? It was so deep. It was so touching, so emotional. And I felt really introduced into the topic, into the speech. S goes for structure. A very well-prepared structure of the speech really made the audience go deeply, deeply into it and follow the speech word by word, step by step, moving deeper and deeper and remembering our own examples from our own lives. T goes for the topic. What topic can be better for the Toastmasters audience as Toastmasters. It was a really good choice of the topic, a really relevant one and a really appropriate one. Um, a very carefully prepared. And O goes for obviousness. This is a small point for improvement. I would recommend to Diana probably to emphasize the difference between basil and pesto sauce in the speech. I actually had to Google why pesto, why pesto jar has a sad smile on it. I, I really didn't get the idea right during the speech. And only after Googling, I got the idea that pesto sauce is a sauce made of basil. It's not alive anymore. That, that's why it is said. So I would really appreciate if you used, if you emphasized the difference between these two 
points inside your speech. For example, add the comparison to pesto in the dialogue, know your place, girl. Like, I felt like a pesto right after these words. It would be really more comprehensive for us to show the difference between a live basil and dead pesto. I believe that's the only recommendation I can give to you after this really brilliant, wonderful speech. So continue planting the basil seeds into minds of the people around you. Go ahead. Back to General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Jana, for a very concise, very decent evaluation. The key to learning is feedback. It's nearly impossible to learn anything without it. And I really love the way you put your thoughts into this acronym thing. And I really enjoy when uh, people, evaluators are so creative. This is wonderful. This is a great example to learn. And I hopefully Diana will learn something and will probably improve her speech for her next contest performances. Thank you so much for both of you, Diana and Yana. Diana and Yana, to be right. Now, the third evaluator of the third speech of tonight, performed by international, oh my God, of international president Richard E. Peck. And that would be our wonderful personal evaluator, a person who also got many prizes at evaluation contests, and I'm happy to present a very experienced evaluator, Kristina Sharikina. The stage is yours. Is it a small world or a big one? It's up to you to choose. Dear Toastmasters, dear guests, and dear Richard, thank you so much for this engaging speech. The purpose of Richard's speech was to introduce or review basic presentation software strategies for creating and using slides to support or enhance a speech. Richard, there were several points that I incredibly liked about your speech, and I would like to start with them. So number one point would go for your black background and white letters. Do you know why, dear Toastmasters, it's so important to use black ground? Because when we are working so hard in front of our computer through the whole day, our eyes get tired. And when we're using the black background, it's much easier to focus our attention and not to get tired so rapidly. So very well done. The second thing that I also would like to highlight about Richard's speech is about the presentation software. Dear audience, do you remember how skillfully Richard used different effects on his slides? For example, do you remember about zoom of the lines of his phrases? Or do you remember those spinning images? Perfectly done, Richard. At the same time, we are here in Toastmasters and we are Toastmasters because we always want to be in our growth zone. That's why now I would like to give you a couple of recommendations to be even a better master, present, master in presenting your speeches. Let's remember how skillfully Richard remembered us about the beginning of pandemic. He showed us as a slide with several phrases. And he was using the zoom effect to focus our attention on one phrase. Even though that effect was perfectly done and perfectly used, I would suggest, dear Richard, to put in dark gray the rest of, of the phrases that you are not using so that the whole attention of the audience is on the main phrase, only on one phrase. My second recommendation would go, even though this speech is about how to use slides, would go to the point of how to connect with the audience. Richard was connecting with us perfectly with his humor. Do you remember about the coincidence between his birthday in the start of pandemic or how he gave five? At the same time, Richard was talking about the world president tour. 
but I would like him to take us on this world tour, to use his personal story. How do you manage your life in these times of pandemic? But what I most more like about your speech or the most like about your speech was that you talked and you used your slides to highlight what you were talking about, Richard. Thank you so much for this. So to resume, amazing black background, good presentation software and amazing effects. At the same time, remember about dark gray, remember about connecting through your personal story, take us on a tour with you. And thank you so much for being so precise in what you were saying and, going, and uh, the usage of your slides. It's a small world or a big one, but anyway, go out and travel it, dear general evaluator. Christina, wonderful evaluation. Criticism, it's like rain, it should be gentle enough to nourish growth without destroying our roots. And hopefully, Richard, Christina hasn't destroyed any of your roots. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christina, for a very specific, uh, highly constructive evaluation. Just be a little bit aware of the timing signals because you were just a little bit out of time. And if you're going to participate in the next evaluate, evaluation contest, beware of the timing of the red signals. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Christina, for a very metaphorical evaluation. I highly appreciate it. I really love listening. Today is just a wonderful, just a celebration of evaluations. I love it, personally. Thank you guys so much, girls, for this. And now we're slowly going to the expert reports. But before we go there, I would like to comment a little bit on, on the table topic session, which was performed by one of our, by the first DTM Distinguished Toastmaster deserved in the Russian Toastmaster community, Larisa. Thank you so much for your wonderful table topic session. That was really great. I was expecting to hear eight speeches, just got a little less. However, uh, the questions were, the questions were not easy. I would really, really have to think before I answer any of those. Thank you so much for such decent and, uh, you know, thoughtful, thought, thought out questions that you pose to the audience. The only thing that I would probably suggest you to add is just a little, a little bit of, you know, Russian aspect to the Toastmaster. Leaders are great, probably a little bit, a little bit more connected to some Russian history a little bit, some questions about Russian aspects, and maybe invite some uh, some people from the Russian community to participate in tabletop session because we really love to gain uh, prizes for the best tabletop speeches. And now we'll definitely have to find someone from abroad, which is great. Still, however, Russian speaking people are also welcome to table topic sessions. Thank you so much for a wonderfully skillfully uh, pronounced uh, table topic session. Now we're coming slowly to the expert session. And uh, let me invite to this virtual stage our grammarian, which, oh yeah, which is, who is Alan Akamba, the member of many clubs in Russian community. Alan, are you ready to perform your report? Welcome to the stage. Yes. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Dear Toastmasters, today I heard the words historical or historical or historic or historically. Bear with me, maybe I missed you five times. Daniel once, Richard Peck once, Betty once, and Valeria twice. So congratulations, Valeria. I also wanna talk about some of the expressions I heard First of all, I'm not a big, I don't drink alcohol, but uh, I want to start with uh, Cole, who said 27 glasses, 27,000 thousand glasses of Guinness, I think are consumed as a passive voice. Uh, so 
he used a passive voice. That's a great way of saying that. It doesn't matter who does it. What matters is the action. Also, Larissa used the term, the word ambitiousness. Wow. I, I don't think I've ever used that word in my life. So there's the word ambition and ambitiousness. Ambition is the desire to achieve something, to be successful, while ambitiousness is the state of being ambitious. So very good use of the term ambitiousness. Well done, Larissa. So there's also in English what you call collocations, words that go together. So you, for example, I heard someone saying, I incredibly liked, well, that, no, that's not quite correct. You should probably say, I absolutely love. So this uh, uh, adjective and adverb go together. Fatah said, you hit the nail on the head. Very good idiom. I'm a, I'm a big lover of idioms. That means you describe the exact cause of a problem. Well done, Fatah. And I think um, the first speaker, uh, Richard said, the stock of Zoom went through the roof. That's more like a slang. It means the price exploded. It, there was a dramatic increase in the price of the Zoom stock on, on uh, March the 11th. That was the historic date he cited. I also have, um, I think that's it for me. Yes, I think. And uh, another idiom I heard was from Diana. I think um, the idiom was uh, to have something stuck in your, to have something stuck in your throat. That means something happens and you keep thinking about it and it, it annoys you. You are not happy with it. So to have something stuck in your throat. And to finish, Tom had another idiom. I like idioms. He said, take heed. Well, that was good. Take heed of the words of Oscar Wilde. Or take heed means pay attention. Don't forget, remember. And he talked about alcoholism and work. So take heed. Having said that, I give the mic back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thanks, Alan. Uh, looks like we did pretty well tonight. Uh, thanks for pointing out the idioms that we used. I personally love when people use idioms and phrasal verbs and uh, proverbs and sayings, and it's so great and this enriches our vocabulary. And especially thanks for pointing out things that are, import are of importance to Russian speaking people because there is a majority of us who are native Russian speakers and English is not native. And thanks for uh, praising us for the excellent use of uh, English as well as some you know, small mistakes too. And thanks for such a wonderful, wonderful and very themed uh, word of the day, historical, 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 two more times and I got the prize. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to introduce our next expert role taker, which is actually my favorite role amongst others, the A counter role. I'm, I love it. And uh, there's always so much fail to improve and get better in A counting. And I would, I'm happy to invite to the stage our A counter for tonight, Anna Solis. Help me welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Valeria. And uh, I have to say, uh, dear guests and those masters, I had not much to do today. I uh, could just relax and enjoy your speeches. But I have a little bit to say. First of all, our president, Anna Rubinina, uh, one E and one A. Uh, next, Denise, our timer, or our time map. Uh, two A uh, and one A. Uh. Uh, our type table topic, like Master Larissa, uh, Larissa uh, two A. Uh. Yana Litvinova, one A. Uh. Uh, what 
details. <laughs> I, I think that I uh, said ah uh, more than um, and uh, maybe uh, one word to Valeria. Uh, two, no, 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 ah, uh, no, eh, uh, but uh, two times and was told and like this. That's all. Thank you very much. Oh, Anna, thanks. Vocalite pauses is something that we really have to get rid of. When I hear from an A counter, one, two, two, one, three, that is a wonderful result. When I count as, it's usually 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, or something more. And I really love another some other sounds and phrases and, and, and words that I really like to count. But that was a wonderful job. And to say the truth, to be really honest, there was not much to count tonight. Thanks so much. And also, it would be great for the next times if you could give us some piece of advice on how to improve in case we think we're, we have too many uh, word crunches, something like make pauses, uh, read out loud, uh, find a partner, something like this. So some, some sort of advice is always good, even if we think we're great and we have no as, no Mr. Sam. Thank you so much for your wonderful report. And now, the timers report, Denise Dementia. This is your time. Welcome to the stage. Thank you very much, dear general evaluator. <clears throat> today was a great meeting. I really enjoyed it. However, my duty today is to announce the speakers who didn't fit in their time limits during meeting evaluation. Uh, so, among prepared speeches, we had a chance to enjoy Diana's speech a little bit more than seven minutes. Among table topics, a tiny over limit time had Florian, Feta, Elisa, and Anton. And among uh, personal evaluators, I had to switch a red light during speeches of Florian, Jan, and Christina. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, that was very brief and very clear, Denise. Thank you so much. There's not much to add from my side, actually. I'm a little bit lost. Uh, thanks so much for the timing signals that you provided. Very clear, very visible, displayed in a really great manner. And yeah, I think people pinned you and you look really cute there. Thanks so much for uh, performing this wonderful role and for a very good report. You probably think that we're over, but do you remember another expert that we have tonight? This is our wonderful quiz master with his left ear and his right ear, who's gonna ask us some tricky questions. Daniel, will you? Yes, I'm ready. You are ready, you are 50. I don't know how to do it. Let's try it this way. Uh, first question, if you have the answer, you write one in the chat. Who writes it first? Unmutes himself and answers. OK. Second question, you write two. You are the first. You answer the question. Got it? Let's go. My first question, why did the chicken cross the road? Okay. Michael Waiter, I'll help. Bruce, B Bruce from Toronto. Oh, to, get, right. to, get to, to get to the other side. Get to the other side. Your boss, quite right. Thank I you. follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Still cool. Number two, the only barrier we have for traveling nowadays. Time zone. Time zone. Time zone. Time zone. Time zone. <laughs> Guys, you are too. Okay, let's let's continue. But first you write, then you answer. Let me help you, Daniel. Let me just look at the chat. You ask your questions, I'll see who is first and I'll just pronounce the name, okay? Thank you, Miss General. Madam, Lander. madam. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. According to Christina. Our international 
Toastmaster President Richard can be better in connection with the audience. How? Bring us to be the tour. Bring us to the tour. Yes, he can bring some personal stories from his world tour, so we can we can know something about him. Thank you. But still, we are not going according to my rules. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> okay. Let's try. We're still good. What is Colm's favorite drink? It's number four. Question number four. Colm's favorite drink. He had speech number. Larissa, Larissa, Larissa is the first. Guinness. Yes, Larissa, <laughs> you are right. Question number five. What is my favorite drink? <laughs> Okay, we have okay, answers. Okay, it's Bailey's. Uh, I, I thought maybe you can recognize oh. Bailey's. Okay, question number six. Who inspired Diana to become a business lady, a teacher, and the most proactive lady I know? Anna, Anna Rubinina is the first. Anna, Anna. Hey, her father. Her father. No. You missed the point. Oh. Come so, on. We have also Betty. Betty, what do you think? Toastmasters Club. Dan In Daniel? So who actually? Who, who, who got the point? Bess? Sarah already knows. It's the president of the Toastmasters. <laughs> right, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Question number seven. What is the connection between basil and pesto? Larissa? Uh, pesto is made from basil. Yes, pesto Which is just quite logical. Basil. Thank you. Question number eight. What Toastmaster contest rule Fata wants to change? Anton? Anton? Not the judges. Judges. Now Anton no, is answering. Judges. Revoke the rule of anonymity of judges. I put I put number eight. I put I was first to put number eight. I was rushed. <laughs> yeah, you was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Who is this? Thank you, Anton. Thank you, Fata. I completely like your point. Yeah. Number nine. Where is number nine? Where can we hear a small world song? Disneyland. Betty? Betty? In Disneyland. On the right, it's a small world. Yes. One day I will hear it also, hopefully. Question number 10. According to Oscar Wilde, the drinking class has an enemy. Who is the enemy? Betty? Betty was the first. Work. Yes, work is the oh. of the drinking class. Betty, you're good. To me and to call, <laughs> for example. Number 11. Russia has only two friends. Who? That's a difficult one. People are thinking. This the is army and the navy. <gasps> Orion, was that you? No? Can you repeat, please? Can you repeat that? Right, Florian, yes. you know that. You know that. The Army and the Navy. Great. <laughs> cool job. Number Who 12. Knows? Where was the Russian first typography was opened? That's a difficult one. It's a tough one. 
when? Maybe only Ida knows. <laughs> and... um, 1570 something? Mm -hmm. Where, not when. Oh, in Moscow? No. Oh. So I thought that you will notice it was outside of Russia. So this <gasps> is interesting. Right, this is Amsterdam. Yes, <laughs> Amsterdam with famous Amsterdam beer. Mm, the last question, number 13. Russians used to have a different calendar back then. What was the difference be between all the world and Russia? How many days? Larissa is the first. Uh, so the same, 13 days. Number 13, 13 days. Yes. And yes. Lenin, we have two new years, actual new year and the old new year. Thanks, everyone. I think Larissa, Betty, will get the most answers to my questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daniel. Normally, we have this quiz master role at some of our club's meetings, and uh, usually we distribute candies for every perfect answer. So the more candies you get, the better listener you are. Next time, when you want to participate, come to Moscow and take part in our offline meetings, which are starting this month already. Thank you so much for participating in this wonderful session. Thanks, Daniel, for skillfully performing it with the 13 uh, lucky number of questions that you have noticed during all our speeches. And I'm really, really happy to pass this floor to our wonderful president of Moscow Toastbusters Club, Anna Rubinina. Thank you so much all for participating in this meeting. Anna, stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone, all the participants, speakers, guests. I'm very happy that we had such a wonderful and wonderful meeting. Okay, I think you're waiting for the names of the winner of the table topic session. I hope not everyone has voted, but still we have not a winner. I've chosen three people, so let me in uh, announce them in the order like we do in contest. So the third place in the table topic session goes to Aliza. Congratulations. The second place goes to Florian. Good job. And the first place goes to Feta. Yes, yes, you won. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh and before I announce the date of our next meeting, I would like to give a word to International President Richard Peck. Thank you, Madam President. And I'll make this very brief. Thank you for being part of the world tour. It means a lot to me. This is my first visit to Russia, to Moscow. And I know that your clubs have been doing a tremendous job there. So thank you. As you know, you are part of the world tour. Only 145 clubs are going to be visited on this tour. You are one of them. And the only club from Russia. You had about 60 people in the room today. That means there's close to 350,000 people who still don't know about you. When the world tour is over, I'll be putting a journal together of the clubs I've visited to share with the rest of the clubs, to share with the rest of the Toastmasters world. What I'd ask is that you provide me with a write-up on what you would like to share with the rest of the world, your club, your country, your culture. What a great cultural presentation today, hearing about the great leaders of Russia. That was superb. I have no restrictions on length for this. I only ask that you share it to me in a Word document so that I can copy it into the journal before I share it out. You're proud of your club. You should be. You're proud of your country. Expect it. Share it with the rest of the world. Let them know just a little bit more about you so that they can connect with you on a deeper level. Madam President. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll definitely share all everything. <laughs> and uh, our next meeting will take place in two weeks on the 14th of April. We're going to have an international speech contest. It might be a combined meeting and we are going to keep combined meetings. So all uh, of you are welcome to take roles and speeches at our club. And, you know, I'm very, very happy that in this time when our small small world is getting colder at some times and it's isolated with COVID, we still can keep in touch and connect uh, with the help of Toastmasters. And I'm very, very happy that we make this world better. Thank you very much. So I announced the meeting closed. If anyone wants to stay for a, for a couple of five to 10 minutes, you can stay and have a chat. And thank you very much. See you next time. You can unmute yourself and clap for us to hear. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you. Have to run. Bye-bye. Okay, bye -bye. goodbye. Thank you. It was very great. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Good luck with your club meetings going back to offline. I wish you all the best with that. Say hello to Jessica. We are very I will. Sorry. I'm sorry she couldn't make it. I really Oh, am. we are sorry. Something. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, if you send her an invite to another meeting, I'm sure she'll try to attend it. She'd really like to meet with you. Thank you. Good seeing you again, Richard. Nice seeing you as well, Michael. Nice seeing you, Florian, who I haven't seen in a long time, my dear friend. Nice to see you as well. Good to as, see you, Richard. As well as the others who have been traveling along with me on the world tour and getting to visit clubs. And now knowing that some of them have been members of your clubs, which is really, really it's great. It's a pleasure. Hear. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to watching the clubs continue to grow in Russia. I know that you've been working hard at doing that, increasing the number of clubs. I remember when there were just a couple and they continued to grow and you're doing a great job and you've got some great supporters there helping you with that. So continue, continue pushing forward. And I know you're going to be very successful. And then when I come and visit, we'll all have a good time. When we'll, I'll come to a club meeting, we'll do this in person. You're always welcome. Well, thank you. I do have to run. Please stay safe. Have a good stay day, healthy. everyone. Or good night, someone. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Bye. Anna. Thank you, everyone. I was happy to see you all. Bye. Yeah, th this, this really was a great meeting. That educational session that carried through the, uh, the session was interesting. I don't see that done in a lot of clubs. Uh, the first time I saw it was in Romania. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, it's really nice. Uh, you know, sometimes we just get an educational session that's like one or two minutes long. But here for the theme of the meeting to have it continue after each of the role players were introduced and after each speaker kind of gave us some uh, additional education to look forward to. I think it was very well integrated. Yes, thank you. Irina, she left. That was her idea, and I think it worked well because there were so many guests who don't know uh, much about Russia. So it's what do you remember, by the way? <laughs> well, by just, way, just what is your take out <laughs> from the meeting? Uh, by I, the way, my email address on the uh, chat, so I hope that I can receive email so I can join. I love Daniel's idea of the quiz. First time I saw it, I'm going to introduce it in my clubs. I'm a member of 10 clubs. Uh, so uh, I learned something new today. And I'm glad the president was here. So I keep continuing with my point of anonymity of judges across. And I will fight for it. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want, and I wanted to point out that I'm sorry I was late. I had a rotary meeting and I couldn't get out of it because I'm the president there. So I wanted to show up your, your thing. I caught the tail end of it, table, the table topics. It was great. And I'm sure everybody enjoyed himself. Uh, I've just the third time I've seen Richard uh, in other countries with me. 
and he's always great, so I'm glad you were able to get him. That's a big feather in your cap for your club and for your area to have him come to your club is saying a lot. Like he said, he's only going to 140 clubs. So out of all the thousands of clubs, having you being one of them is it a big feather in your cap. You should be very proud of you yes, and your team are. bringing him to Moscow. So congratulations. And again, I'm sorry I was late, but I had another engagement. So thank you. But you know, we did this meeting with the help of um, with the help of all the community. So there were people from other clubs and Diana, even from England. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. they all come together. They all come together. Uh, people, Rotary and Toastmasters are very, very similar. All you have to do is ask for help. <laughs> you ask for help that people will come out of the woodwork, both at Rotary and at Toastmasters to help you make things happen because they want to see everybody learn. They want to serve the community. So it's, it's fine. I just think you guys are, should be very proud. You did a good job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Right <laughs> yes. And I just want to say before I go, I, I send out uh, an email each day about the next stops on the president's world tour. Uh -huh. I put together a whole list of when the stops are, and then I reach out to the clubs and I get the information. So you can send me a private message or an email. I indicated it in the chat. Tomorrow is going to be a meeting in Lithuania. Yes, yes, we know. Yeah, yeah you're probably aware of that one. It's been on social media for the past uh, week or so. But uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones, of course, coming up in the next month. And I'm happy to just send out a reminder and uh, keep you apprised of all of those visits. It's going to be about 30 or so. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very helpful. I've seen him in three countries and the people are always amazed to see him. And the word that comes to my mind is, is your word of the night, historical. Him going to 140 different clubs in one year is very historical. No other president have, has ever done that. Not that many clubs. Because before they had to travel physically to go all those clubs. And that's why it wasn't possible. Now he can. So it's a, it's a historical year. Right, exactly. And I, I've been fortunate. I've been on 58 of the stops, uh, mostly since January. He began doing it in October. Right. But uh, it began picking up as uh, more and more clubs started getting interested in it. And it's, it's been quite, a, quite an interesting experience. Yeah. You're just spreading, spreading the good word. And, that, and, and just like you. You know, you're coming out of the woodwork to help and do something that is needed. Um, just volunteering to do that. So that's great. We, there, there's yeah, just so no, many, it's, it's a so labor of love and it's, it's yeah. been very rewarding. Just on the call today, I mean, there were, I think, 24 people from my distribution list that came on. And, um, you know, some of them, no doubt, would have uh, found the information and come anyway. But right. the fact that we're all kind of connecting together and... Right pooling those resources and getting to be part of this, seeing the different cultures of all of these clubs and hearing different messages from the international president along the way. It's uh, it really is immensely rewarding. We hear so much bad news all the time. It's nice to hear some good news. And when people do good things, we need to spread that word. So um, Dave, we need to, to thank you uh, for your efforts. I mean, go, going out of your way to put that information out, that's just helpful. And we're, we have people and Toastmasters and Rotary both who are helping people every day, but we just don't hear about it on the news because good news doesn't sell, bad news sells. That's why we get bad news all the time. So good, when you get a chance to spread the good news, just keep doing it. That's a, that's, that's a feather in your cap too. Yes, Michael, I echo your voice. I think David has been doing a tremendous job, making a lot of efforts. I have been one of those people who have been traveling with him. And he puts a lot of time into this to make sure that his group gets the information so that we can follow this. Yeah. Now, I don't know how many clubs I have been to, but probably 90% of where David has been. So yeah. David, thank you and I salute you as always. Thank you. I've been to a few clubs with David as well, a bit all over. And also I believe David is on his, um, Maybe, well, not quite, but nearly the 600th meeting of Toastmasters on Zoom since March, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I visited uh, just a little bit over 550 different clubs virtually 
since last year uh, as part of part of my own efforts towards uh, expanding my horizons and connecting with all these Toastmasters I otherwise never would have met. It's uh, been quite a journey. Yeah, I, I didn't well, David, know. Do you know how these clubs are chosen? It seems like they're, they're pretty strong clubs. Yeah, so from, from what Richard has, has said, uh, it, he doesn't choose the clubs. They're chosen by world headquarters. And I believe that world headquarters reaches out to different regional advisors and district directors to get some input right. on, right. on what the uh, clubs are. And then they just make a selection based on that. And they try to pick some corporate clubs as well as open clubs to really get a feel for uh, the different uh, diversity. Yeah. David, you have your lister. When was he in Toronto? I think I saw him in Toronto at the Star Club, was it? Do you have your list? When, oh, uh, I, I, I ha I'd have to pull it up. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I, yeah, just, I, 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 I heard that he was in Montreal. Yes, when right. When he visited Canada instead of Toronto. Right. But yeah, right. it would be nice if he visited here yeah, too. I saw, I saw him in Canada and I saw him in um, Qatar, in, in Doha, Doha, Qatar. Qatar no. I'm sorry, Doha, Qatar. So I saw him in I saw him in two places, and this is the third one now. So yes, he he also he does some visits. Uh, actually, now a lot of visits that are not on the tour specifically, uh, just going there for clubs anniversary or special meetings. So sometimes he will make appearances that are off the tour. The Montreal one was at CN Collaborators, uh, that was off the tour. But he gave a he gave a keynote speech. I forget mm -hmm. what the official stop for Canada was. I think it might have been in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Seem, that that seems to be. Uh, yeah. I cool. think it was. Just, I think it was a Star Club. It was a new startup club, I believe he went to, but I'm not sure. So. Okay. It's a new new founded club, I believe. So yeah, while you're yeah, doing, I, I do I do have a full list that I keep on that's this. That's fine. Stuff. That's fine. I got. Yeah. I wrote down your name. I'll contact you just to get some information. So. David, yeah, so while sure. you're busy going to 500 different meetings, uh, in the last 11 months, I've completed two pathways and done 60 speeches at different clubs. So uh, I didn't. Follow, oh, wow. I, yeah, two complete pathways and 60 speeches since. Um, oh, that's since, quite impressive. In, in 11 I, months. So instead of following all the tours and going to all the places, I picked some spots and, and made my made my pathways. So um, and founded and also founded two new clubs. So. Wow. Okay. That's quite impressive. Yeah. I think I, I gave 32 speeches at clubs that I'm not a member of over the course of the journey, but I guess that, that's a pretty small percentage overall. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, but that's, uh, still, that's, yeah. Still a, that's still a lot of work. I mean, that's an awful lot of effort. And, and I know for many people, them, them just getting through one pathway in a year for a lot of people is a big, big chore because if they're not used to speaking, it's a lot of work for them. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay, I'm out of here. It's late. I'm, it's I'm very sorry, guys, to interrupt you. I have to leave for yeah. work in yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, if no, I leave, no, that's I fine. I got I got to no, get back to work. I'm in the middle of my work close. day. Thank you, Anna. And super job, super job, Anna. Thank Congratulations. You. Great job. <laughs>